Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome to an episode, welcome to my kitchen, welcome to Out of Character in my kitchen. It's actually, as the name of the, sh- the podcast goes, it's actually out of character. A, because Martin is not here, and B, because I'm I'm in my kitchen, what the heck, what's going on? All the rules are out the door. Here's the truth. I don't know why I committed to a beanbag in a corner. I hate beanbags, I just found out. I never had the privilege of growing up with a beanbag, and now that I got, you know, $50 to my name, I got a beanbag, and I hate it so much. And I had to spend another $40 to fill it up with stuff that's going to never recycle. Literally foam, styrofoam. So not only am I killing my back when I sit on it, but truly I'm killing the earth when it's all done, it's said and done. Um, I just stubbed my toe so hard, I almost fainted a little bit. I think I was recording. I think this is all running, so you can skip to the end if you want to. I don't know if I was in in the shot, but I'll, I'll put it at the end because many of you like to see me in pain. Mart is not here because every fourth episode is supposed to be a solo. It really is because Martin says, hey, I have a girlfriend, I have a wife, I have a job. Why are why are you at my house every Sunday morning? And I say, I'm sorry, I thought we were friends. And then he says, LMAO, no. So I am home alone yet again, as most nights go. I've got my plants, I've got my calendar that's still on August. So that's how things are going. If you don't know, every week on Wednesday slash Thursday, normally Thursday... Um, on Patreon, patreon.com slash OOCpod, short for Out of Character Pod, I do a weekly solo episode, and we really do have a lot of fun there. We really do. And I wouldn't lie about that. You can go check. Just take a peek. You can actually subscribe for free just to be in touch. But then you got to give me $5. That's my favorite part. I'm wearing the, the, the Slushy Noobs merch. Many of you are slushies. Actually, probably 90% of you. Um... Go cop some, slushynoobs.com. Like, look at how good quality this is. I'm so, m- me and Martin, we, were call, we called each other. Oh, I just missed the table. We called each other and we were both still wearing it. It's been three days, so, and it, smell, it still smells good. It still smells good. And I'm an aluminum free baby. If you don't know what that is, it's a movement of people who found out through a TikTok that deodorant with aluminum will give you cancer. Cancer of the what? Cancer of the I don't know. But I don't want cancer. Cancer in my pits. Hell no. Aluminum in my pits? That doesn't sound natural, right? So I said hell no. And I bought some aluminum free deodorant. And now, eight hours after applying, it gets really natural. Um, So, you know. It, it, it's, um, I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, maybe getting cancer is worth it. I don't know. What are you guys up to? What do you do? I once tried my mom's deodorant and it was the, the one with the ball that would just spin and kind of lubricate your, and that was a core memory for me because then I put it in my mouth for some reason. And then I put it with my pants because I was four. Hope you guys are doing well. I, I am. I, I really do have a lot of fun um, alone. And many people don't believe it. That's the most annoying part when you tell people that, like, I'm fine. And they give you that look on your face like your mom just died. It's exhausting because it's like, it's like, what the heck? It's like, what? What do you want from me? And it's not even, it's a pity look. It's like, trust me, I'm fine. I really am. Um, there's parts where it gets, does get slippery for sure, and we all know that, but don't give me that look that, like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. it. It's not, it's not even a look. It's an absence of a, of a look. It's, um, it's the eye contact. You know, you could not be making eye talk, you know, the whole time. And then, you just look at you like, hmm, sorry. Sorry. But I am thinking about adopting a cat again. After my sweet baby Peter died, Peter was, um, if you don't know about the saga, I had a 
a beautiful Russian blue. Adopted it him. I actually bought him. <laughs> That's probably why he died, because I bought him off Kijiji. That's the, the Craigslist of Canada. I and dropped 300 bucks on him. And they told me it was a boy, and I named it Peter. Uh, and all my life, all of its its life, all of our where our lives met each other, I, I used the wrong pronouns. I said he, him, for all of Peter's life. And, you know, he can't say no, nothing really because he's a cat. But then one day, uh, a friend of mine... I don't remember who, but somebody came and started playing with the cat's crotch and was like, hey, I have a cat. This is not adding up. He should have a little thing hanging right now. And I'm like, back off. They're dropping a little bit late. It happens uh, happened to me. Or did it? I don't even remember. Um, but it can happen. And he's still as much of a man as he, I don't care what you say. And I don't look around my cat's crotch just on my spare time. I know, uh, as I said, I'm alone, but I'm not that alone, okay? Um, you know, I'll find hobbies. I can I can figure out what to do with myself. I've been playing Cooking Fever. It's actually kind of addicting. It's a lot of fun. You guys should play it. So I can do that before I get to, get to Dawson. Oh, my God. What's his middle name? Shane? Yaw. Yaw. <laughs> Shane Yaw Dawson. No, I'm not there yet. But they, they keep accusing this cat to be a girl. I said, look, cat, girl cats are the sassy ones. That's those are the ones that suck. That's 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 why I was offended because I'm like, my cat is the chillest cat ever, and it, also its name is Peter, so it can't be a girl. There's two reasons, and people were very adamant when they met Peter because they would go straight to the croc. And I was offended, but not. And then I and then I started taking looks. It got older, eight months, ten months old, and I said, "Okay, you know, I misgendered you. I'm sorry." A month later, it dies. And while it's dead at the vet, and I'm sobbing, and they're taking this cat away from me, I ask, real quick, can you check uh, the gender, real quick? And I watch him spread my cat's sedated legs apart and give me the news that it, in fact, wasn't Peter. It's a Petrus. Petrus. So, um, so in the next one, I'm going to double, I'm going to double check. And I'm not going to get one from Kijiji. It was annoying because they had a girl and a guy cat. So I was like, word. So it was just a mix up. Anyway, Peter was the greatest thing to ever enter my life, and I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. Um, really. I mean, truly. Just a, just positive, man. Who the hell is just positive now? Not me. I'll tell you that much. I'm not positive. There are things I don't understand these days. Like, F from Formula One. Those are things I, there are things I don't understand. Formula One, who is, who's watching it? The millennial pause. I don't understand that. I feel so embarrassed when people, when I open comments or something, or people comment to me, the millennial pause, lol. Wow, that was a jump scare right there. The millennial pause, why is my alarm on, please? Focused. I don't get it. And maybe that's because... I'm not. A, I'm definitely not a millennial. I'm 18 years old. I'm young and spry. I don't see it. I tr truly don't see it. Y'all are overreacting every time. Maybe you're like nine years old and grew up on an iPad Mini, and you cannot stand someone taking half a second to gather themselves. Look, I didn't expect myself to be on the side of these these people, but really, you're doing the most, you really are, Formula One, you're doing the most, if you're a fan of Formula One, and you're not like NASCAR, yee, 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 then I don't understand, why are you in Toronto, Ontario, excited about 
you know, Max Shagan Bagan. What's his name? The fast one. Max Stoppenhagen. Like, come on. Lewis Ham. Lewis. Louis. Louis Hamilton. Hamilton. I'm I'm glad you y'all find something you like. You don't understand. I, I understand. I know how hard it is to find something you enjoy. I don't know what this part of your life is that I'm hitting, but, you know, I've, I found the app Cooking Fever, the download, that play the game now, and it's like, it's not even a question of... As soon as you feel that feeling that you have, you're looking for, that, you know... That fortnight, some, the middle of June, fortnight, seventh grade, you're just on. I don't know. I don't know what that feeling is. For some of you, it's I don't know. It's the flow state of presence. Ooh, that's a good one. In the flow, I'm mean, flowing in the present. Whenever I feel that in every, anything, whether it's a mobile game where I'm flipping patties, or it's you know, doing squats, I must. Pursue it to its fullest extent. I will be doing my daily missions on cooking fever all day. So if that, if F1 gives you that, you know, more power to you. But I would just like to know because I want a piece of that as well. I really, I really do. I really do. It's, it feels super, um, forced upon me. And that's when I get fishy. You know, it's very... Mu what is it? I don't understand. Going... Like, I thought it was a joke. But then I see, like... You know, hot women into F1. And that... It's trouble. Because then the hot men follow, and then the ugly men follow. Because the ugly men are actually following the hot men. Not really the hot women, because... We unfortunately are too afraid. I saw some thing about a study. Okay, it was a TikTok, all right? I, I'm just, I have to pump fake it like that, so that um, y'all think I'm not like you. I'm nothing like y'all, as some someone once said. It was like, I'm trying to find it here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not malty. I mean, I'm not, I'm not just cooking. <laughs> I'm not cooking fevering right now, but it's something about like, men being turned on like men who suck at video games being turned on by men who are good at video games something like that the line's getting blurrier guys and I've been I've said this since day one there's a it's going to be a pansexual future and and um, and I'm here for it Taylor Swift is coming to Toronto there's been a lot of Taylor speak just in, in everything I say, I, I, I don't, I don't know how it happened, but it did, um, I don't want to get it twisted, I do not listen to Taylor Swift, that's actually cool to say now, so, I, it feels like stolen valor in a way, I do not actively listen to Taylor Swift, except in my car when I don't have my phone, because, um, when I bought my Honda Civic from my landlord a couple years ago, this Irishman named Neve, I think. It was one of those that are that are spelled really funkily, and then they sound somehow even funkier. When I bought it from him, middle-aged man, single, it came with a bootleg copy, CD copy, preloaded of uh, the album Red. So, but it's not Taylor's version. So, unfortunately, I do not support her when I play it, but, um, oh, but it's, oh, but it's actually a CD. Oh, that's where the support comes in from the streams. And not only is it not her CD, it's actually a bootleg one. So, I'm basically, a, like, I'm listening to her in the most unsupportive way possible. Anyway, that's the one I listen to, you know, but I don't, I, but I'm not saying, I'm not asking I can't say it too loud or she gets excited to play me anything um, because I don't know what situation would uh, 
I'm not in any situations that require that right now. So, but maybe I'm not saying I'm not opposed to in the future. Anyway, she's coming to Toronto for six straight shows. Six straight shows. And I'm thinking, what's my number? My number. What is my number? The the price that I'm willing to pay to show up. Because this is more than a show. I'm attending. This is the new Michael Jackson, whether you like it or not. I want to be here for history. I want to see this cult. I want to see many white women in flannels hold hands and spin around. I don't know what's... I don't know. I'm just assuming. I want to see inside. Because... I don't think anything has been like this before. Truly. Y'all saw Brazil? They sprayed on their Jesus piece freaking to say hello. That is, I don't think that's ever been done. Not for F1, not for Beyonce. Should I say it? So I would actually really want to go. That's history in the making. But unfortunately, I know, I know the prices seem to be obtuse. I'm going to look it up right now. Um, uh, Taylor Swift tickets and six shows in a row is, is absolutely ridiculous I think I mean how do you even have that in you that's what that's when I really get into like the lizard people theories and things like that because how are you how are you still standing this is like a full day you know oh tickets are not how do I buy it though yeah, I can't even buy them online. Like, this is ridiculous. Six shows, back-to-back. You can't. It's the biggest venue in Toronto, Rogers Center. Yeah, okay. Yeah, dang it. Um, I would like to be there for that. How many of you are Swifties? Comment down below or, or say something because they're kind of sleeper agents, you know? And the only time I've ever felt invested in it was when I saw the the Travis Kelsey karma is a guy on the Chiefs, and I said, "Hold up, why am I tearing up a little bit? This is amazing." Shout out Brazil, Argentina, what's going on? So I don't even know if Argentinians do that accent. I think that's just Portugal. Uh, Argentina, I'm from Argentina. No, I think I swear y'all do that. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to get y'all an Argentinian. Argentinian accent. Accent. Here we go. Oh, my God. I just want an example. Jesus Christ. Uh, man. I really need a little... Why can't this guy behind me type up, you know? <laughs> Jamie or whatever. Kai Newman. What's the third one? Who? Everyone's got some underpaid... Um, you know, young man to do it. I, I am the Jamie. I'm supposed to be somebody's Jamie, really. Uh, if we're really going to be honest. Oh my God, I just shook up everything. Look, you're not even supposed to be looking at me, really. Podcasts are audio, an audio thing. Yeah, I'm not really doing anything to enhance it visually. Who's that guy? Some guy has a setup kind of like this. A little bit of a stretch. We just tells people to like gaslight everyone in their lives and like never forgive people and just recluse into a he's like bald but he's gay but he's like really mean also that could be multiple people that guy's really something and i hate it i hate that guy i think it's um you know people do their thing that's fine but Taylor, you know, if you if you're going to Taylor Swift, I've you know, I will take any tickets. If you have a ticket in Toronto and you can't make it, just DM me and I will take it and I will go. I've done this multiple times. I went to Cage the Elephant alone. Oh my god. Whoa, my screen just turned off. I went to Cage the Elephant alone and I hated it because this guy just kept playing like the new stuff. Boy, what are you doing? I want to, like, come a little closer, can you see? Come on, come on, come on. Things are not always what they seem to be. But no, he was doing the new ones. 
And you know what? I can't be that mad because there were people jamming to it. So I was really the the anomaly. And it was it was just really a lot of white people. And I left um, before they even got to the stuff I recognized. And I can do that because it was a free ticket. Someone else gave me two tickets to um, Alex G and uh, Always. And then I went and now, and then I met, um, and then I met a lot of you guys actually, including Finn Wolfhard. So, so what you you could send me on, I am like your little pussy to sort of in a weird way where you can just send a little thing to me and I will do it. I have all the time in the world. Time is what I have right now. You know those Facebook memes where they show the, they got the, like the, the five-year-old, then the like 25-year-old, then the 65-year-old, and then for the five-year-old it says money, eh, uh, health, ding, right, or something like that, time, ding, and then when you're middle-aged, money, eh, health, ding, I already forgot what the third one is. You know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> time and ding. That's what I'm trying to make the point here. You got a coupon. You got a, you know. I'll, I'll do it for you. Don't worry. I just saw a video. It broke the news. The Uber Eats deal. This is a promo. I've, you know, I have been eating Uber Eats for like 11 months. Because it's cheaper than if I ate rice and peas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I am not joking. I'm going to tell you this because you because I care about y'all. And because it's probably going to get patched soon because of the TikTok I saw revealing the exploit had like a trillion views. Here it is. And... It works best in big cities, obviously, and you're going to find out why here in a minute. Every once in a while, Uber Eats will give you 5 40% off of $40 coupon codes. You heard that right. 40% off of $40. Now listen carefully. From there... You get the membership. You get the free trial. You, you So the fees are way down. Get the Uber one. Who cares? Nine bucks. You'll see. You're going to do this like eight times that month. So it's worth, bestie. It's worth it. And if you don't get those coupons uh, and you've been waiting a while, just add a bunch of food into a bunch of carts and then leave the app. And they're going to send it to you to entice you to, to check out. So you'll get it eventually. Once you get it, then... Find, go to categories, and then go to offers. And if you're in a big city like me, there's a lot of restaurants, so there's a lot of offers from a lot of restaurants. Now you have to find a restaurant that has a buy one, get one free offer. And, and, it, and it's not going to be exactly what you want to eat, but it'll be close. It's not going to be church's chicken, but it'll be like mosque is foul. I sounded like I was saying the mosque is well. <laughs> um, but you add a, and then when you added a cart, let's say it's like 10 bucks for the burger. You added a cart, it's 20. That's what it registers it as. You add two of them to, to your cart. So now you got four burgers in your cart. It registers at 40, even though you're paying 20. And then the 40% off of 40 will kick in. And then it'll knock off of the 20. Boom, 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 boom. And then you get yourself a half gram freaking hybrid and you call it a day, bruh. Or don't. <laughs> or just freeze it. Or literally freeze it. I'm not joking, dude. Hella food is freezable and I have found it out. Ramen, check. Fried rice, vegetables, burritos, sandwiches, burgers, fries, literally anything. You can freeze it. If you've got an air fryer, it's got an unfreeze button loaded. You click it, and in eight minutes, it comes out hot and fresh. It's really, it's crazy, and it, it comes out to like $4 a portion. 
only downside is you will be eating seed oils and um and like just just junk in a way so every once in a while like an actual healthy place will do that we'll have a buy one again free and then you and then you go that route but also another downside is you never kind of get exactly what you want you know, if you're a type of person who needs dip on their pizza, like you can't eat the pizza without it, then then just first of all, kill yourself. And then second of all, um, grow to freak up and then also don't do this hack. Like I've, I ate like katsudon for like a week straight. And I don't even know what it was the whole time I was eating it. It was yummy though. What else I eat? I ate like chicken burgers, like fried chicken burgers, but it was chicken thighs. Horrible. I hated it. Never do that. They they, they do the chicken breast for a reason. Cause it soaks it all up. Anyway, my for you page and all my feeds are just full of fat turkeys getting fried up, and um, you know that's what's up. I think that's awesome. I saw the movie Thanksgiving. I gave it a rating on my Instagram story, but I'll give you it again. Honestly, one of the best movies of the year, and I'm not just saying that because um, Addison Rae is in it, and we all love Addison Rae, um, and Tim Dillon, and 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 what's his name? Patrick Dembski? And the guy from Suits, absolutely hilarious. I really think it's the best slasher. Like, I would rather watch Thanksgiving than, uh, what's it called? X, the one with Mia Goth, like, honestly, I don't need to see Kid Cudi's, you know, schlang, I'll just see, like, Addison Rae get chopped up or something, like, word, and that's crazy that, you know, Addison Rae and Kid Cudi are getting, uh, Kid Cudi's actually a very good actor, he is, I, and I think that's good, I don't think we should box people into, um, into what they do. And I just say that so you don't judge me when I drop an EP because that's something that will happen and you have to be ready for it. Thanksgiving was really great. It was also an hour 46 minutes long. It was perfect. I could just chug on this giant Fanta I bought guilt-free the whole time because as soon as it's done, I can pee. Um, Just, you know, it doesn't take itself seriously. It really was good. I really do think you should go watch it. Because I'm plugging it so hard because um, it's so easy to pass on it. And I think it will. Like the, the theater we went to is empty. And and, and when the theater's empty, people have, are, have more audacity to talk during the movie. Because they don't have people right next to them. So I hated that so much. But, um, but you know. That was my mistake. Uh, sorry. I'm moving a brain before. Yeah, so you should really watch it. It's easy to skip. You know, there's not a lot of ads. The, the strike just ended. Nobody promoted it. And it just, you know, movies are flopping, really. They are. And I'm not worried about it because they did it on themselves. You know, if you make good stuff, then it's going to get seen. Um, but, but Thanksgiving, really. And they also filmed it in Hamilton, here in Hamilton. Why am I so weird about this? Why am I plugging this so much? I'm not, I'm not affiliated, and I'm not. You know, you don't really gotta watch it. Like, <laughs> we were going in to watch the movie, and right next to us was Killers of the Flower Moon or whatever. Martin Scorsese, and me and Martin just looked at each other like, "What are we doing?" Or you should be there. Um. Huh. But that's t- real taste is, is is Thanksgiving over Flower Moon. I'm like, what's a Flower Moon? Come on, Leo. Doesn't Leonardo, you know, doesn't Leonardo like little girls? Seriously, Leonardo himself would watch Thanksgiving, so he could watch little girls get chopped up. It's true. Um. Sorry, I'm adjusting. Um, this is also on Spotify, this podcast. So if you don't, if you haven't given it a shot, it's also on Apple Podcasts everywhere. You can find it out of character. 
go check it out and give it a little rating, please. And I know how annoying this is, but it really does help. You know, and we're we're getting a late start to this game. I'm I'm rebranding this podcast so hard. I'm trying my best. I always do. So so just try a little for me, okay? Just hit the five. Or you can hit the four. But nothing if you're gonna do below four, then don't do it. Okay. All right, now my hair is sticking out. That's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, I'm just I'm just present, man. Let's see what you guys have to say. If you guys don't know, you can weigh in and literally affect the podcast with your own dilemmas. It's true. Out of character pod on Instagram is the official Instagram for this podcast. Eventually, it'll have its own like actual cool posts, but for now. It's kind of a way to connect with you guys. So if you DM it with your dilemma, with some details, um, it, you know, give me age, setting something, and, and then so we can weigh in and help you guys out with your situations, that would be great. All right, starting so- strong, Sophia weighs in with an audio message. And this is an option. This, you can just choose your own adventure with this. So, Sophia, what do you, what's going on in your life? Let's hear it. Hi, Out of Character Podcast. This is Sophia here, inquiring about a freaking question that I have. I actually need advice on something because it's so bad. But hopefully you guys can help me. So, I'm in college. I'm about to graduate. I'm 23. Um, Hamza, if you're, like, looking for a girlfriend or a visa, I was to the US, I didn't give that to you. Anyway. For real. (laughs) I was home. um, I go home like every few weekends or so, probably like once a month. And me and my sister, we share a computer room, basically. Um, She's 17. I'm 23, like I said. Of age, um, looking for Hamza. Um, But I caught her looking at Fursona stuff, basically, on Amazon. Nothing big, like tales and stuff should i talk to her about it <laughs> oh my god okay so i had to, i had to work through it was worth working through that this is i don't vet these honestly i'm not <laughs> uh i'm not just showing off that um and i'm definitely i didn't definitely just open the profile that's a big one but i think you should not because as spider-man would say it's a canon event you really need to let her do her thing um you know, the personas right now, they are a dying breed. I actually went to a persona convention. What are they, is that what it's called? Furry convention. Furry convention. Furry is a little derogatory. Persona, I, pr- I actually pr- appreciate that. Um, I went to one, and it felt, you know, as sexless as everywhere else. You know, the world is a sexless world. This is a sexless generation. But the furry convention, that's when it's supposed to stink like, you know... It's supposed to get natural. That's why we they reverted to all fours or whatever. So I was hoping to get that. But really, it felt um, underwhelming. Not many. Sort of a dying breed because they are in some ways getting poached, um, unfortunately. So I would let your sister or brother, I think you said sister, explore that. And you should be a supporting sister to her. So, yeah, you know, it's, I've always said this, my favorite people, I really do enjoy furries, and I think, I think we all should, because they're doing something many of us are not willing to do, which is be ourselves. Oh, no, but really, like, come on, what's your fursuit that you've got hidden in your closet that you will not put on because... People will look at you funky. What's that tail you're hiding in between your legs? Is that you like pickleball? Is it that you watch slushy noobs and you're a 24-year-old woman? Whatever that is, share it loud and proud. And you could do that by buying slushy noobs merch. It's true. It's out now. And it's uh, it's good stuff. So big ups to your sister. And uh, good luck on that, really. And why are we still have, why do we still have computer rooms? You're going to college. You're coming back in college. Come on. Computer rooms. I, th- I literally thought that was back when like. 
I don't even know when the stock before the stock market did its thing. Angela Bassett did the thing. My woman Davis, my woman King. What do we got here? Okay. Here we go. Hi, Homs and Martin. Sorry, it's just me. Absolutely loving the pod and Slushy Noobs content. Thank you. So, I wanted to ask a question. Me and my boyfriend are thinking about moving to Bangkok from Copenhagen in a couple years. And I'm after I'm done with uni. I'm half Thai, and I really want to get closer to my Thai side, as I've lived in Denmark my whole life. But, I'm kind of nervous. I'm going to be too difficult. It's going to be too difficult to move so far away far from friends, family. So I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you think it's a good idea or not? Keep up the amazing work. And also, please do more Roblox videos. Thank you so much. Well, big ups to you, Allison. Is Bangkok in Thailand, though? What country? Oh, it is. I'm an idiot. I got it confused with Hong Kong. <laughs> I love how y'all do that out in Europe, like you see the rest of the world. Like I'll just move to I'll just move to Bangkok. If someone from like Tennessee just wakes up and wants to go to Bangkok, they will be put in an institution. I mean you are half Thai, so it's very different. Um, here's what I say. Hell no. Nah. That's my opinion. I don't think moving back because, I mean, you grew up your whole life in Denmark. Um, literally your whole life. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. That's like when they got those orangutans in the sanctuary and then they just plop it back into its natural habitat. It's not going to work. You're not going to know where to grab the, you know, to get the fruit and whatever. So, it, truly, I'm in the same boat. I was born in Yemen when I was zero years old and my grandfather's living room i'm a home birth doesn't get more i mean i'm not i'm that tied and then at eight months old i i came here and to, to the u.s and i lived in oklahoma for a bit and then i moved to illinois you think i should move to yemen and do a do a a, a semester abroad there hell no hell no i like having uber eats that i can just get you know six servings of ramen for 24 dollars i do like that i do not want to be you know i don't want to be in the middle of a cholera outbreak i wish them the best and i support them in the any way i could from here but i do not want to be in a humanitarian crisis right now bangkok i i've heard is actually doing much better so not really valid for your case honestly hell no nah. and you said your boy is not in the mix he's he's a whitey he's a full whitey let's see here my boyfriend yeah you didn't say anything about your boyfriend so i'm assuming he's white two thai people in denmark is i don't think that's super common i'd say get out of denmark that's what i'd say come to canada come to the u.s uh screw denmark i've always hated the danish is that what y'all are I'm just kidding. It's so funny to hate the. It's it. I don't think people from the rest of the world, even when I came to Canada, you guys don't realize how Americans truly don't care about anything but America. Like genuinely, unless it's like Punta Cana or something like. And they don't. Why? It's like why would I care about it? Don't y'all want to come here? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because even in Canada, they, you know, they got courses in, in class. Like, they got this one called, like, World Religions, where, like, in, you know, ninth grade, they take you to a mosque, then they take you to a temple, they take you to a Hindu temple, and then a Jewish one, and then a church. You know what that would do to the youth of, like, Missouri? So... I think you're on the right track. Just get out of Denmark. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Hate on Bangkok. I'm sure it's great, but don't go because that's your roots. Okay, um, you're looking to be disappointed. I mean, I don't know if y'all have Uber Eats in Thailand or excuse me, Denmark, but 
let's see what else is up. Um, and you know, in my advice, please take it with a grain of salt. Why, why would you ever want Martin or I's advice on, on your, on your life? You know what I mean? So here's another audio one. That's fun. Hello, Hamza and Martin. I hope this message finds you so well. Um, I was just wondering if you would be able to possibly hand out some extremely great advice on trying to be true to yourself. I think it's a truly great message for our generation. And I, whenever I watch Martin and Hamza's videos, oh, you're sorry, your guys' videos, I just, I wish I could post things like that, but I just get embarrassed. And I just want to know what you guys do to like not feel embarrassed. Okay, thank you, and have a great day. That's such a nice thing to say to someone. Thank you so much, Camille. Um, honestly, it goes back to that furry thing, you know what I'm saying? Look, obviously, I'm not fully myself. You know how scary that would be for you guys? But I'll be straight up. I think I got it figured out more than most, and, and so does Martin, and that's why I've always been so... Um, you know, I'm trying not to use the word attracted, but um, drawn to, to similar people, not just Martin, but other people in my life who um, it's like, hey, you, you know, you've got nothing to lose. And I think that's what it boils down to. I approach everything as I've got nothing to lose. Uh, and it's not a good mindset, if, especially if you're very poor or in a situation where you need to, um, you know, live, or you're dependent on someone, or, you know, you live in someone's house, things like that, it makes it very difficult. So as soon as I turned 18, my number one priority was to be a fully independent, whatever that meant, um, so that I can do whatever I want. And I'm not a bad person, so that's okay. If you're a bad person, then please comply to social regulations because I don't want to, you know, we don't want criminals and things like that. Honestly, 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 I, it's not just on video. I really just do not care what people think. And that can only be started when you only care about what you think that you only care about what you think of yourself and you realize that that is a sort of like garden you got to like keep up with you know the thoughts in your mind they're, they're not just in and out they sit there and they and they like leak into your actions every way you, you can so if in my head I'm not doing anything wrong in my life. I don't have a deep shame. I don't have a deep guilt. So I don't move like I do. I'm not, I don't talk to people like I'm hiding something. Um, so it's like, I've got that. I've got, you know, I can sit with by myself for days. It's not good. It's not a good thing, but that's a good exercise. You know what I mean? I'm not some monk, dude. And I'm sure there are so many of you who are, are here as well and the rest of you is really not difficult it's just um it's just really not and genuinely not caring and not telling people about what you're doing and like literally moving in silence bro <laughs> it's literally moving in silence um it always helps to have the um the things to back up what you what you're saying the way you act uh you know I've always found being in better shape helps me just be more confident and different and indifferent to what people think because it's just like I'm already doing hard things. I don't need to I don't need you you know what you say about me doesn't really matter. Honestly, it's so hard to say because in my life there are so many <clears throat> like forks in the timeline of my life that I always see, and, and not not always, I don't, I don't reminisce, but um, where I wouldn't have approached a lot of situations that made me the way I am, or um, 
you know, gotten lucky enough to be presented with things. Like going, I was going to go to college in the U.S. Then I got kicked into a foreign country. Then I got like internet clout. Then I sort of lost it. Then I got it back. Then I met people. Then I moved to a new city by myself. There are just things that I don't know if I just went to school regularly. I don't know how much of this would be, you know, it's hard to determine the causation and correlation with these things if it's just me maturing or um, some sort of adversity I went through. But all I could tell you is how I feel and, and what I do now and why I do it. And if I had to guess, it's really because I don't care. I have nothing to lose. Um, it started when I was the most depressed, I think. When I was the absolute depressed I was when I moved out here and I was alone um, for a while, for like half a year. And, and I had some really bad habits. And I was like so depressed that I had nothing to lose. It was like that sort of angle where, boy, I'm on my way out anyway. Like, I'll die eventually. <clears throat> like, I'm not going to kill myself because I'm going to die eventually. So let me just wait this out and see how this goes. And when, when that sort of kicked in, it was like, I'm living on like game mode. It's, it is a, it is even privileged to even say these things, obviously. Um, so that's why I'd really try to put myself in, uh, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, but all I know is that it really starts with you and you can't lie to yourself. Um, when you're like being yourself to people and things like that, just because you want to emit a vibe that you're confident and you, and you know what you're doing or you just emit, you know, you're starting with them first. Um, you know, people can tell ever since I was younger, I could just talk to older people more because like, I just like way rather, you know, every camp I would go to, I, I would just talk to the counselors and it was one of those like corny things where it's just, oh, you, you're mature for your age. But really it was just, I just like to talk to people who aren't playing as much mental gymnastics when they're talking to me back. Like you're not you know, there's this new thing when I talk to people my age where they're just trying to be active listeners and they're just staring at me in the face. I don't know what's going on. And I, and, and, uh, man, this is so pretentious. Holy cow. And I'm so sorry, but I'm really, tr I'm trying and I, and I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing, dude. You got to realize this. Okay. Um, uh, but I just always like talking to people who are not so, um, Worried about what they're going to say back. I don't know how to describe it. Just kind of older people, you know? You talk to your, a grandpa or something, he's not going to be, like, worried about what you think. So that's kind of how it was for me. Even now I talk to a 28-year-old, 30-year-old. It's just funner. So that's why I was I was kind of just inspired by it, was just older people in general. How can I get the wisdom that took them so long to get there sooner so I could use it now? That was something... When I was the most depressed, I had like a book I wanted to write. And it was like, I forget the title. It was so dumb. I literally just wrote like one chapter. And it was like things like this, where I was like, things I wish I was knew when I was 20. But I'm writing it while I'm 20. So it was stupid. But the whole focus was just looking at these minor um, habits and and things just kind of lessons that took people so long to learn when they're like older and r really try to learn them sooner than later. What a per convoluted and um, pretentious answer, but I hope that helps. Here's one. I need advice, ladies. Hey, Hamza and Martin, my name's Phoebe. I'm a 20 year old from Australia. And I recently have broken up with my ex I was living with. I was listening to the Patreon episode the other night, Hamza versus the world. That was a good episode. Patreon, guys, really, listen, listen up. And I, I didn't plant this in here as a promo. And you talked about living alone. I'm going to be on my own until my friend gets back in February from Canada. So I was wondering how you best recommend navigating living alone while still maintaining some shred of sanity. I think I'm mostly concerned with having no one to share my thoughts with. 
and I have tried journaling, but I just can't get the hang of it. Perhaps I need a pen pal. I don't even know. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks, girls. Love the pod. This, number one, before you even try, you must realize something, that this is an unnatural state to live in. It is unnatural and unhuman to be alone for long periods of time. So it's not that when you're struggling with it that there's something wrong with you. It's that there's something right with you. It's that you're you're like, your body is like, is, you know, human connection is is in line with with food, water, and shelter. It's it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying this. This is this is known. Okay. So number one, you got to find somewhere where you're just talking to people. Uh, whether that is like just making sure you're going outside, you know, going to the gym, seeing physical people in real life, things like that. Or, I don't know, the movies or something. But even better would be just to have a, a friend, find someone. You're saying it's a little bit of a gap before someone comes. So you, you're not really reinventing yourself in a new city or anything. But I would say that. Yeah, number one, know that. Number two is just to keep yourself busy. That's it. That's it. Look, it's good to have time to yourself when you... When you are a busy body and, it, and and when that's a resource that you value then you then that's awesome you know you're a, you're a mother you're a father you got kids you got a job and you got 30 minutes to yourself that's fine that's awesome and and the more of that the better for that person but for you anytime you're not doing something you are in that in your head so it's kind of uh in a way, you are escaping your thoughts. So don't don't smoke a lot of weed. That happens to a lot of people. Um, don't drink alone. Don't smoke alone. That's a good one. Um, just do try to do something that uh, try to have some sort of habit. Make sure your sleep is in check. Make sure you're 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 waking up sleeping relatively at the same time. Make sure you know you see sunlight sometime in the day. Make sure you have some sort of ritual in the morning. You know, brush your teeth, take your vitamins, shower. Like, because no one's going to, you got no reference. You, you know, sometimes I'll hang out with somebody after being alone for a while. And I'm like, bomba cloud, I haven't showered in three days. Because I don't live with nobody, so I can do whatever I want. So live as if you're going to, like, see people. You know, change, change your clothes, things like that. That's how you don't lose your mind. Those are my pro tips. So many of you are sending advice, and I'm so sorry we can't get to all of them. Um, I'll do one more. There's m so many. Oh, my God. So much Australian love. Holy mackerel. Okay, I'll weigh in on this one. One last one. Hey, lads. I need advice on what to do with my homophobic mom. Or mum, M-U-M, for the, for the Australian. I, 20-year-old male, had a very homophobic mother growing up, which was hard as I came out early at 18. She went through my phone and found stuff she wasn't supposed to, so it wasn't a choice. She tried sending me to Christian psychologists, wow, in hopes of converting me. I'm going to take a sip of this water, sorry, 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 sorry. To Christian psychologists in hopes of converting me. But they were all chill. <laughs> no way. And just said there's nothing wrong with being gay. <laughs> Still, she persisted and would regularly tell me how I'm going to hell and how much she loves God more than me. This was a huge growing, huge issue growing up as I loved my parents and valued their opinion so much. My dad always stayed out of these conversations. But he was homophobic too. Now I have a boyfriend and my mom is fully supportive of gay rights. Whoa. But I can't help but still feel super angry and resentful towards her. She apologized a few times over the years for her behavior. But it feels the apologies just aren't enough. I'm now faced with many issues as an adult that were caused from childhood. Such shame and social, such as shame and social anxiety. I would love your guys' advice about how to overcome this 
anger and resentment. Much love from Australia. Wow. Um, first of all, I am not gay, so I do not know what that's all about. So I'm weighing in on... This is almost like my own little point of privilege. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen those. Um, honestly, recently I have been struggling with that as well. With uh, forgiving. Because... Um, I've always struggled with forgiving people because I would always be way too quote unquote understanding um i always humanified people so much literally you could do anything to me and i would be like i would try to psychologicalize you in my head to the point where i i i I would bring you down to your four-year-old self and be like this was just a little kid who got yelled at by mommy and now they're yelling at me it was it was so hard this is actually not forever a problem but for the past like four years so hard even my own parents i would do that to them if they wronged me i would be like just psychologicalize them and that's a word i'm, I'm doing and and re- very recently and, and what that would cause is that um i would be so focused on intention and what was their intention in, in hurting me you know what what was the intention and what they did and try to react to the intention um like if they meant well but it came out harmful or if they didn't mean any harm and it came out harmful then i go from there but then i came to a point where that's too exhausting and if you show yourself enough to me then i'm just going to take you at that and i'm not going to over i'm not even going to think about it at all and if i don't need you in my life then i'm just going to chop you out which has worked for me in a few situations, but I have been in hairy ones um, that it doesn't feel like the best option and I need to give it thought. Look, if your parents do not, are are genuinely homophobic now, that's a no-brainer. You drop them and, and, and don't, ever freak, don't ever think that's not an option. They just deny your existence. Um, that is a thing people do and they and they live to tell the story but this one is one of those where i can't tell you to just shut them down and just walk away and not psychologicalize them because i'm tempted to psychologicalize your parents by reading this you know i'm seeing growth here they do some really messed up stuff but the fact that now straight up supportive of a gay boyfriend If they grew up super religious, they probably saw what they did to you and then are learning from that. And and this is so, such a bad thing to say right now to you, and I'm so sorry. But, oh, I don't even want to say this. I don't even want to say it, but I'm going to, because now I have to, but I wish I never even brought it up. But you know how they say, like, it's your parents' first time being a parent too, right? But no, wait, but, but, but hold on. Take that with a grain of salt, you know. That was so bad. I'm so sorry. Look, there's only so much I can say because I I don't know uh, what that's like. You know, Australia got stuff upside down anyway, let alone this. First of all, I say get out of Australia. Actually, no. Australia seems awesome. I would just, uh, I would be really transparent uh, with what you believe that they have caused you through your childhood, like shame and social anxiety, and, uh, and, and try to talk to them about it. But honestly, I would see a psychologist, I would see a therapist. Child trauma is like the most prevalent issue in all of society. I believe, and um, and it's not unique, and there are ways to approach it and people to talk to, really. So as much as I'd like to be the one little key to fit it all, I'd talk it out. And uh, that's me. That's Hamza for an episode, guys. You can find me every week alone, all alone, on the Patreon. If not, 
I don't really care. Next week, Sunday, I'll be here with Martin. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.